Meeting new members of our General Assembly again tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. All right, now look, this, is, this happened once before, I think three years ago, but just as I began, this happened. You know what, I gotta break the habit of buying the cheap ones, but you know, the reason is I can't, I can't keep the expense, you can't keep, you know, pens, you know, I've never stolen anything in my life, but I'll steal your pen. I don't think it counts, does it? Uh, it's inadvertent. Uh, and then this. Anyway, welcome in. I told my guests this evening to chill. We're, we're very casual here. I've, that doesn't <laughs> define casual. I don't know what does. Uh, great to have you aboard. Thanks for tuning in on this Tuesday evening. Uh, the State Representative Karen Alzate is here. She is brand new to the General Assembly, and I don't know what kind of caper she pulled off, but she ran unopposed. Uh, a new legislator running a post. Did, did you find the, just, 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 yeah, there you go. Thank you. I mean, there's no way we're going to get through this opening segment with, ah, I feel better now. I always have an extra seven pairs laying around somewhere. Uh, this Manafort plea deal thing is interesting, don't you think? The headlines have the national media once again energized on collusion, collusion, collusion. And, of course, the president will be talking about how there couldn't be any impossible, no way. But I will tell you, uh, there's an interesting dynamic here that needs to be paid attention to, and that is that the president had to file his written answers to the special counsel just last week. And all of a sudden now, Manafort's stuff doesn't measure up. Uh, I'm quite certain that Bob Mueller has the goods on whatever truth trail Paul Manafort stepped away from. But what we don't know is whether it's got something to do directly with the campaign or whether it has something to do with his own personal business in the Ukraine and the like. But what we will find out is the truth when the prosecutors go to the judge to, uh, to explain away his cooperation deal. That just went poof. Uh, so stay tuned on that, right? Uh, you know, we try our best not to get in the middle of this stuff most nights here, but that one was unavoidable. Uh, just wanted to ask you a quick question based on this headline that was in the Providence Journal yesterday. Yeah, so state worker totals are up to 14,000 and change, and the levels of employment for state employees now rest at the same level they did a decade ago. Now, remember, we had all sorts of uh, layoffs and buyouts and plans to move state employees off the payrolls back when Governor Gacheri uh, had the, you know, what hit the fan economically. And, you know, we've been talking about financial discipline in the state a little bit, administration from administration. But the slow crawl uh, is interesting. And what I'm going to ask you to think about and feed back to your legislators, and maybe your new legislator has a thought on it, is whether or not this feels like a good piece of news or a bad piece of news. Uh, because there hasn't been much attention paid to the inflating employee payrolls. At the same time, there are certain social services and the like that have been desperate for the amount of employees that they need, uh, DCYF being one of them, right? So this requires more examination, and we'll do so uh, over the next few weeks, hopefully, on the program. In the meantime, the story of the day yesterday was the sports betting Let's get it on, said the Senate president, who, of course, was here yesterday as well. I've got a small note, maybe not so small note, uh, to, uh, to follow up on from yesterday with the Senate president. But in the meantime, here was the report from Eyewitness News on the grand opening. Let the games begin. It's official. Gentlemen, if you'd like to hold those tickets up so everybody can see. Legalized sports betting up and running in Rhode Island at Twin River Casino in Lincoln. It, it felt good. It was exciting. There was a lot of activity, and you see people that are excited and anxious to place their bets. Uh, well, obviously, it's going to raise a lot of uh, revenue for the state, uh, just in the tax dollars. I mean, we know that it's a billion-dollar industry that's been for years illegal, except for the state of Nevada. So um, it's a chance for the state to get a part of something that's really, it's, it's fun. 
The new form of legalized gambling comes after the Supreme Court overturned a law prohibiting it this spring. Lawmakers put the framework for it into the state budget. It was supposed to start in October, but was delayed until today. Uh, I always knew this would be a tremendous revenue generator for the state of Rhode Island. I'm still confident that it will be, even though we started a little later than we anticipated. This is the first phase of the project. A new sports lounge is under construction and is set to open in December. That's the same month sports betting will begin in Tiverton. I'll tell you, it's going to be a stretch for Twin River to get that new facility up by Christmas. Uh, they're working fast. I actually stopped by last night to get a glimpse for myself and um, got the uh, nickel tour and appreciated that for the management at Twin River. Uh, you know, I actually thought about placing a bet myself, but, you know, I'm a paramutual guy. I enjoy the horse racing stuff, and uh, that's immediate. So, you know, I'm betting the race, you know, there's a dollar triple bet on uh, the race seven at Aqueduct. Being me. You watch the race, and either you cash or you don't. This whole thing is kind of like, okay, I'm betting the over-under on Monday Night Football, and then you sit there and go... So you really have to have a facility that, that you know, invites you to watch the games and have uh, kind of a gathering and an entertaining experience just hanging out watching ball games because the pace is completely different. Uh, now, look, I've never had a philosophical problem with sports gambling other than my qualm as a fan. I've talked about that at length on the radio. Um, you know, I, I don't know what fandom is going to uh, end up being when so many people now have the legal opportunity to put cash on the line. Are you sitting there at Gillette Stadium for your Patriots worrying about them winning a championship or whether or not they're covering? You know, those are different questions. Then there's the online gaming aspect of this. Now, follow this very closely. In the latter part of the show last night, Senate President Ruggiero sat here and told me when I asked him the question, what is your legislative agenda for 2019? This was after we talked about the sports betting. What's your legislative agenda for 2019? He told me that it was online gambling. Listen. Now, is that a referendum issue? Because mobile gaming then becomes a whole... That, that you and I are going to really battle on that one. I mean, is, does that require a different process or just a piece of legislation? I don't believe so, because I believe sports gaming... Well, didn't you tell me that last game. time that you thought the mobile would, be, would require a referendum? I thought some people were saying that. I mean, they were saying that about sports gaming. Right. So, uh, I mean, I don't see it because there's a lot of... the. the, the Two existing facilities, one in New Jersey and one in, well, both in New Jersey, feel that wherever the server is, that's where the, the, that's like oh, home plate. Me. People are going to love that because they're going to, they're going to say, I don't want to just, you know, I used to be able to call my bookie. Now I got to drive to Twin River or Tiverton. That's what they're going to say. Look, my big qualm with sports betting is not that we're doing it, that I thought we should have a referendum on this. I do think it's a different kind of, of, of gambling altogether, and there are plenty of lawyers who would say so. Uh, I'm not going to die on that hill, but the online gaming then is another expansion, and you heard very clearly the Senate president assign attribution to others regarding whether online gaming needs a referendum. And it did dawn on me, because I've been running around with the thought that it was the Senate president who told me recently that it did require a referendum. And lo and behold, we went back to May of this year on the same question and look at the very clear answer. All the information that I received, uh, other attorneys who represent uh, professional sports and the NCAA, they felt that the Supreme Court was going to take this up and that they would issue a favorable decision. Uh, in light of that, uh, I think I spoke with the governor's office, told them what I was looking to do as far as just sports betting, not internet gaming at the time, because right. I am of the opinion that internet gaming would require a referendum because it is an expansion of gaming. I knew I hadn't lost my marbles. The Senate president is going to have to regroup on this. This is a very important public policy matter. And his answers over the span of a handful of months are very different. So, there you go. Here's a headline about running for office. It's really a sad thing when seats are uncontested. Maybe not so for the winner, but uh, for, for general democracy and the like. Brand new representative-elect Karen Alzadi is here. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How did you pull off running with no opposition? So Representative <laughs> Coughlin in Pawtucket uh, said he didn't want to do it anymore, mm -hmm. right? 
So he said he didn't want to do it anymore until the last day of filing. So I went into this knowing that I was going to have an opponent the whole time. Oh, so you thought you were going to primary him? For sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it ended up being... And then he decided that he wanted to retire, is my understanding. Hmm. And so I ran, I still ran um, my race the same way that I started day one. Which was? Which was with the idea that I still had an opponent. So I still went out there, I knocked on doors, I did all the mailings that I needed to do, I met all of the people that I needed to meet to make sure that they knew that I was serious about this, that this, just because I ran uncontested and didn't mean that I was just going to give up and sit on my couch until November. Hmm. Okay, well we'll talk more about what your mission is. you have any thought, by the way, on this online gambling and, and the state's commitment to sports mm -hmm. betting? You're going to have to make some votes down yeah. the line. I think I have to learn a little bit more about that in order to make a real, genuine opinion wasn't, on that. Uh, wasn't sure. on your radar screen when you were running for office? No, actually. Nobody was talking to you about no. it? What was the key thing that was on the radar mm. screen? We had a few, um, I had a few uh, people that did want to talk a lot about the Paw Sox mm -hmm. and how sad that they were to see them leave. Yeah. And so a lot of the questions that I was getting was, what's going to happen now? And I think that that's something that we're definitely going to keep talking about with the city officials for sure. All right, when we come back, we'll dig into that a little bit and talk about some of the important issues that this new rep brings to the table. Stay with us. And there was some of the campaign material. This uh, represents uh, Karen Alzadi's mission statement, a Democrat. Uh, you voted uh, in the caucus to support the speaker, correct? Yes. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Tell me, though, what the people were saying about the Paw Sox loss, uh, asking, you know, what's next, obviously. Did you, did, did, do you have a strong thought about that debacle? I don't know that I would call it a strong thought. However, I think for me it was also a loss. Right, so it's something that is very near and dear to me because I grew up there, mm. right? So um, now we're trying to think about what we're gonna do with the space available and how we can utilize it, right? So um, I think Pawtucket is going through some very different changes um, I think it's definitely trying to figure out how we can bring, um, you know, grow our economy. And so now we lost something that is um, very near and dear to a lot of our residents. And so now we have to figure out what we're going to do with this really great space. Yeah, what, they, what, they, what they're going to miss is one thing. What the economic opportunity missed is another huge thing Absolutely. altogether. The whole Slater Mill, man, that whole Riverwalk concept, the Apex building, uh, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the worst drop ball I've seen mm -hmm. in state government in a long time around here. Uh, so you're going to have to work pretty dil pretty diligently on trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to support Mayor Grebian's efforts to find something new. Do you have good faith that the speaker and the governor uh, in your line of mm -hmm. uh, focus are going to do the right things by Pawtucket? I think that they definitely are hearing it from everybody. So not just Pawtucket in general, I think they're hearing it from a lot of people in the state about um, what's next for Pawtucket. And I think that, you know, all of us working together, so city officials and also our, um, you know, our state delegation, if we work together and be able to kind of like really come to them with a real genuine plan, I truly do believe that they're going to help us. All right, so you are a new, young, enterprising person in the General Assembly. Uh, you did support the speaker, which is uh, compelling. For sure. What is your, why did you support the speaker? So I supported the speaker because I think that um, Pawtucket, if we come together, we're gonna do more together versus being apart. So I understand that uh, one of our reps did not vote for him. And, but I don't think that being on the outside by myself is going to help us any way that we can, right? So it's not necessarily about um, what, it, what I thought was good for myself. I thought about what was good for my whole community. So I think that if the five of us can band together or four of us can band together, I think that we can get more, um, more things for our community. The progressive movement is real. There's 21 folks who say they're going to, you know, act on a reform mindset. Mm -hmm. Is there reform that you want to see in the General Assembly? I definitely think that they have really great ideas, and I don't think that my ideas are too far away from them. However, I'm my my plan, right, if that's what we want to call it, is to band together with the Pawtucket delegation and to see how. So you're local. You're 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 local focused. 
For the, yes, for the bigger picture, for me, yes. But I understand that, you know, I do have a whole state that I do, I am representing for sure. So I'm not, I'm not straying too far away. So you're a case manager with the Providence Center. I am. And you've been doing that for five years. Yes. Helping people find jobs. For the most part, so I help. Uh, so I help the Latino community because we're the only Latino team that um, has all of our clients are Spanish speaking, and um, we help them, you know, deal every every day, right? So somebody that handles their life with a mental health diagnosis. So we help them anywhere from going to medical appointments to filling out, you know, benefit forms to just having talk with them, you know, going and having a coffee with them, making sure that they're where they need to be. And if they're ready for employment, then we can also help them with that as well. We have a lot of dis uh, disparity in Rhode Island right now over immigration matters. For sure. Uh, the term sanctuary city is bandied about for whoever's definition it mm -hmm. seems to serve. Do you have a thought on that? So I definitely, I come from, I'm first generation. Both my parents came over um, from Colombia in the early 80s. So I definitely have that to hold near and dear to me because I don't know where I would be if I had grown up in Colombia during that time. Um, so I'm, I'm all for trying to find a pathway to citizenship for a lot of our immigrant communities. And Pawtucket is a has a huge immigrant community, right? So Latinos and Africans as well. So I'm all for trying to help them come out, you know, and not be scared to maybe grab some information on how they can get their pathway to citizenship because I think that's really important. So um, my mother is still a resident. I'm trying to help her obtain her citizenship, but she still has a lot of the same thoughts that a lot of our Latino and African communities or immigrant communities believe that the things that used to happen back in the day, right? Like you could never come out and say that you were an immigrant or if you didn't speak English well, you know, they were gonna deport you. And I, that's not the truth anymore. And so I definitely want to be able to give a voice to those who are afraid to come out and let them know that there are services and there are ways for them to make it to citizenship. You're comfortable with the Trump administration's disposition on this? Um, what do you mean? Just in terms of their whole approach. Absolutely not. Hmm. You know, they. I don't think that they're handling things the way that um, they should be. I think that they do I think things it's by sound more, it's, it's, it's instilled more anxiety in the Latino Absolutely. community, right? Absolutely. It's very scary what's happening right now. You have people who have been here for 30 plus years, who have worked, who have paid into their taxes, who have raised families, you know. I'm, I'm a product of that. And to be afraid to have my mom, who is here legally, and to be afraid to get her citizenship because of a sound bite, I don't think that's right. And if this is just my mom who is here legally, I cannot imagine what it's like for others who are here illegally. It's hard to stay informed accurately, is it not? Absolutely. There's so many things and so many people are saying such different things on the same topic. Mm. So this is a focus of yours? Absolutely, for my community. All right, we'll take a look at some of the other priorities for the new reps. Stay with us. So our brand new rep from uh, Pawtucket, you say reproductive rights is a big thing for you. Yes. What do you want to get done? So I definitely want to be somebody that tries to get this through. I think it's really important. What is this? This, um, the Reproductive Health Care Act, this bill. I think it's so important for Rhode Island to be able to, to be able to keep, um, abortions legal and safe also you know I would do work in health care and so Planned Parenthood has been under attack you know on the federal level I think it's great I I admire the work that they do I used um, Planned Parenthood when I was in college and didn't have insurance um, I think that we need to have more discussions about what it means to what, what the word reproductive means, right? Because it's not just abortions, and I think people take that and they run with it. I think it's more about family planning. I think it's more about education for a lot of our students and people who don't have any ideas what it means to have um, safe sex or you know if there's some sort of sexual um, diseases out there. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a resonating understanding in in the constituency about what the what the matter is. We've got some old language on the books, for sure. and you want the old language to be written how I think or, it means, or rewritten yes how. I think it should be just more clear as to what it means to have reproductive health care in Rhode Island right or even across our nation so we have states who have taken away the the right to have an abortion but now what's going to happen we are not being educated on reproductive health care in our schools you know world um, nationwide right and I think that's super important I think that in order those are I'm very pro-choice so I think that that's 
something that I definitely want to fight with the rest of the other reps who are also on this bill. I think it's very important to be able to provide care, right, in whatever, however people want to take that. So I work in mental health, right? So I take I take it from there. If somebody who needs this this kind of help, it should be available. So if we're gonna do, if we're gonna give, um, if we're gonna give health care across the board, I think that this is one of the things that we should keep fighting for. Importantly, schools are a big thing for you. What's your single thought on, on, on the school system? Absolutely. So I think our school systems, they're suffering in many different uh, ways, right? So we have infrastructure. You're a, you're a Tolman grad. You were born and raised, yeah, so born and raised. you've been through the system. Absolutely. I'm a product of our school system. I want our, our, our students to know that, you know, you can do everything, right, that you want to do, because that was how it was taught to me. I think our schools need to be upgraded not just infrastructure, but it also needs to be a safe place for them to be at, you know, in the winter time for it to have heat and hopefully, you know, some AC when it gets really hot out. What's your financial idea about this? I and mean, we've got a quarter billion dollar uh, uh, nut that was just passed by the voters mm -hmm. with another quarter billion dollars coming in two years, but the first quarter billion dollars is, always, is already spoken for. for sure. I mean, like the East Providence schools probably sucked up more than half of it mm -hmm. just because they're in the pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. They're in the in the line of asking for it. Do um, uh, you think there's enough money in in the system right now, or do you you want to see a reprioritization? I don't think there's enough system to fix all of our schools, right? Our schools are they're old and they're deteriorating. I think that we need to figure out how we can get our schools to 21st century learning. And that's not just infrastructure. Well, I'll tell you, in Pawtucket, you got an opportunity. Stop jerking around with the idea that you can put a single-A baseball or soccer team in a McCoy now that we've lost the opportunity to, to do the right thing there for the Paw Sox. Knock that sucker down, build a new financial, I mean, a new educational facility there, whether it's a merger of Tolman and Shea, mm -hmm. and who knows. Uh, bring the municipal buildings up there and at least give yourself a chance around Slater to do an economic development project. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in concert with that, maybe the capital expense will give you some of the things and the bells and whistles you're looking for. I mean, otherwise, you're just, patch, you're just patchworking. Absolutely, and that's why I don't think that the money that has been allocated to a lot of our schools is going to bring us to where we need to be. I think we are patchworking right now, and I think that we do need to find another way to get some revenue so that we can build or build our 21st century learning for our students. All right, so what is your, uh, give me 30 seconds on your mission statement as a newly elected state representative. So my mission statement, uh, I definitely want to make myself accessible to my constituents because I think that those are the people that I care about the most. I know that I am on a statewide position, however, those are, what they need is my priority and my city is my priority. So I am willing to work with our city officials and also our state officials so that we can get Pawtucket where it, where it should be and where it needs to be. And give me 10 more seconds. Where does Pawtucket need to be? Where Pawtucket, should it be? Pawtucket needs to be upgraded. <laughs> it suffers from a bad rap. Unfortunately, but I don't know why. Pawtucket is a great place to be. I love living there. It feels like home. Mm. It is home. Congratulations. Thank you. Be in touch. Thank you. Final word and we come back. That was kind of a really raw and honest answer about Pawtucket. The new state representative doesn't know. Doesn't know why Pawtucket gets a bad rap. I don't know either. I enjoy driving through Pawtucket. The, the working class, middle class neighborhoods are so well kept. The, uh, the city's got, you know, its own flavor. But for some reason, it is just getting hit in the chin nonstop, and it's got to stop. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow here, back at 7.30 at midnight. And, of course, we'll talk on the radio at 3 till 6 on WPRO. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.